All right, I asked him politely to go somewhere else. They are moving. So. It was so funny because we heard them say, um, I'm having an issue with this. And we were like, oh, man, are they pushing back? Are we going to have an underground fight club here? Like, what's going on? <laughs> no, they're good people, actually, with one of them having a beer later tonight. So um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll buy him the beer. So. <laughs> nice. OK, that's cool. That Very cool. Good. So we decided to start recording just in case, you know, there was anything like happening. So we are <laughs> <before> <laughs> recording, but what we'll do is we'll pause and we'll actually. Start. It's one of those moments that you make a lot of money, but something unexpected happened, right? <laughs> Exactly. So I'm going to clap and we'll wait five seconds and that's that'll be the marker so that we'll know to uh, start the podcast here. You want to write down um, 40 seconds. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Private Practice Startup Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Katie Lemieux. What's up, Startup Nation superheroes? We are back and excited to be here. This is Kate Campbell. <laughs> so we had a great show last week, and actually I flew so low for that one. Um, that was me with Joe Muirhead from, well, JoeMuirhead.com, Purple Co. And actually, so interestingly enough, back in, it's been three months now, um, we had Joe do a Facebook Live with us and talk about her program, Five Favorite People to Help Therapists Effective Network Market. So I did the Facebook Live, and then I was like, I think I want to do the course. So I actually just finished Joe's 12 week course because interestingly enough, when I came into private practice, a lot of my practice has been built on like ads and online stuff and not a lot of effective networking. So I just wanted to know like, what does it take to be effective at networking? So we actually just kind of talk about the course, things that we've learned and how you also can be effective at networking. So if you dread networking, you're definitely going to want to listen to that podcast. And that's actually the second time that we've had Joe on the podcast. We'll have to um, add in the show notes, the first episode where she was on where I flew so low. I'm not going <laughs> to sing like you did. <laughs> Doesn't sound as well. <laughs> but anyways. And you guys talked about how to write, how, how to speak, right so clients can listen or it's some, <laughs> so whatever. Sorry, we'll put it, listen. Yeah, it was like how to speak, how to talk, write, and, and speak. speak so that you attract your ideal clients. There you go. Something like that. But it was a really cool, fun episode, value-packed. So it's interesting. We both flew solo with her for one episode. Yeah, so if you've actually never heard anything with Joe, you're definitely going to want to listen to those. She's super energetic um, and just really a pleasure to be with. And not to mention she's from Australia, so she has a really cool accent. Yes, so which is totally cool. Listen to just for that if, if that's, you know, nothing else. Yeah, <laughs> today we're excited to have Chorus here from TheraChat. How do you pronounce your last name, Chorus? Uh, in Greek or in English? Let's hear it in Greek first. Kaligas. Kaligas. Okay, what Kali else? Kaligas. 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 Okay. Yeah, got but it. in English it's called Kaligas. <laughs> nice awesome. to be here. I love yes. your energy. Love your energy. Aww, Good to have you. you here. And this is actually the second time that we're trying to record. Well, that we're not trying. We are doing it. We're recording this time because the first time it was on Friday the 13th and we had every tech glitch <laughs> in the possible world that happened that day. It was the most bizarre thing. We had like four podcasts batched back to back and had to reschedule every single one of them because something went wrong on everything. Yeah. So today everything is smooth sailing. We got our new podcast boom here. We're feeling like legit podcast people, right? That's right. Or I don't know, like radio show talk, talk, talk host. host. <laughs> I can't breathe. Radio show talk show host. Yeah. Okay, co-host. Yeah. Radio co host. Yeah. Whatever. Exactly. <laughs> yes. well, we, val we validated the Friday the 13th, right? We validated the meaning song of it. It, very true, right? Exactly. Yeah. And actually, interestingly enough, Chorus is in a basement. He looks like he, this is like the second underground podcast that we've done. The first one was with Roy Higgins. Huggins, uh -huh. Higgins or Huggins? Huggins. Oh, Huggins. Yeah, from Person Center. Tech. Yes. Him and Lyoth Dalton. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. That was a fun one. So this is going to be a good one. We got good vibes. I know this is like a way longer intro than we typically do. <laughs> But bear with us. We're getting through it, right? So yeah, so Chorus is from TheraChat, and he's going to talk about three tips to get your clients to do homework. So I'm really excited about this because I actually got to take a tour um, of TheraChat with Chorus. And actually, I, I went to download like the free trial, and I've just been like so busy. I haven't done it. So I told my clients about the TheraChat. I was like, I'm going to get this really cool app to help you guys stay accountable. They're like, yay. I'm like, but right for now, until I get it going, just email me that you did your homework. <laughs> so I know you did. Um, so anyways, we wanted to say if you're a loyal fan and listener, we love you guys. You guys are amazing. Um, we appreciate you. And if you're a first time listener, we got a special guest uh, gift for you. Talking too fast. I'm mumbling my words. 
And that gift is our A to Z cheat sheet, the essentials for building and growing your dream practice. So you can grab that over at privatepracticestartup.com, head over to the resources tab, or actually you'll see us right on the front page, smiling on the, the home water, page. You home can page. click the button there and download the it there. easy breezy, easy breezy. And, and so also hang out with us on Facebook, the private practice, just look for the private practice startup. Yeah. We'd love to see you there. We've got a thriving community of private Thousands. practitioners all across the, um, well, it's international. Yeah. So all across the world. Yeah. Join us. We'll see you there. Yeah. And before we dive into today's episode, we wanted to give a quick thank you to our sponsor for this episode, which is the private practice We wanted to give a quick thank you to today's sponsor for our episode, which is the attorney approved private practice paperwork from the private practice startup. So if you guys are in private practice, you know, you've got to have stellar paperwork that meets the legal and ethical standards and creating that from scratch is a painstaking endeavor. And then hiring your own attorney can be extremely expensive and there's a lot better places to spend your time and money, right? So we sure. have simplified that process for you met with, we put in a hundred plus hours, worked with four plus attorneys to bring our paperwork up to the highest legal and ethical standards. We've got both a la carte paperwork options. So you can cherry pick your favorite forms, or you can take advantage of our package options. We also have supervision paperwork and business forms, all sorts of good stuff. Head over to privatepracticestartup.com, visit the shop tab, and you'll see all of the options for paperwork there. And you can experience our paperwork forms for a super affordable price there as well. We have the $5 release of information plus a free HIPAA form there. So make sure to download that. Yep. So Chorus, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. So tell us how, how did you create TheraChat and why? Yeah, sure. Um, TheraChat is actually a product that we created with my team. We were working on, a, on another product in the wellness space, which was called Adap. And uh, it was basically a product where you, we provide health recommendations and insights based on data you're tracking with wearable devices and mobile apps. Uh, this was not working out from a monetization perspective. So we were really passionate about mental health. And one of the things that I always believed in is that we know so much about our cars and laptops um, and we know so much less about our health. And I ask myself why. When it comes to mental health, things are even worse, actually. Uh, so we started, we, we wanted to create uh, other products and services. So we took an approach of an innovative approach, starting to figure out what do we want to do. So one of the first things that we did in mental health is we started talking to mental health professionals, specifically therapists. And we wanted to know their problems and needs. We actually had no product um, at that point of time. We wanted to understand what are they going through uh, because we wanted to learn. So we interviewed over 500 uh, therapists in the U.S. and we found out all kinds of issues they're having. And to our surprise, a lot of them can be solved by technology. And one of them that we found out was the notion of homework and specifically what happens in between therapy sessions and what do therapists do. And they typically assign homework, not all of them, but the majority of them. And uh, there was nothing there for them to actually help them uh, monitor progress um, assign homework in an easy way. They were using, they're, they're still using paper worksheets and some of them use Google documents and so on. And uh, so we decided to build a product for that. And that's how it all started. Yeah, and it, it is really cool. I mean, like I said, I got to do a tour with you and some of the things that I really liked and a lot of times, so my first, one of my first questions when clients come back is, you know, what's working? What do you, what progress are you making? But also what do you want to focus on today? And many clients will say like, oh my gosh, like last Wednesday, like oh, there's something I wanted to talk about with you, but I can't remember. And you guys in the app actually have a question that says you can let your therapist know if there's something you want to talk about. You can give feedback to your therapist on the session. And that was really cool because like as a therapist, so you could just pull up the app and say, oh, well, you had mentioned that you wanted to talk about this. Do you still want to talk about yeah. that today? So that was a definitely cool feature. And I love the features you have, like you can upload files and videos and all these other worksheets, like you were saying, and it all gets done through the app. That's really cool. It is really yeah. cool. And, and the level of accountability. And I, you know, sometimes I personally get frustrated because I know to whatever it is, whether it's in business or whatever you want to excel in is you have to be accountable and you have to do the work. Um, yeah. And sometimes like, I don't know for me, I don't know for you, but like sometimes I get lax with that with therapy because I feel like sometimes people are like, like some of them are really just process oriented, right? And they like to talk and they like think about it and whatever. And they don't like to do a lot of stuff, even though a lot of clients say they do. But yeah. when you have like this level of accountability, um, they actually do it more, which is yeah. super cool. Yeah, they make exactly. better progress. Mm -hmm. 
definitely. And actually, one of the things that uh, was um, a surprise for us, we have over 40 activities ready to be assigned, so they're ready um, to be scheduled based on a day and a time. And, you know, we went and created some smart activities like emotion tracking and journaling. And uh, one of the most successful activities what, is one, what you've mentioned, which is very, very simple. It's about, it's, we call it about next session. So it's one of the activities that are being assigned the first uh, two clients, which is the client can talk about the next session and what they want to talk about. And this is the first and most successful activity that clients really use because it's also about the recent advice, right? You're more likely to remember what happened yesterday rather than a week ago. So at the moment that something happening, you uh, kind of um, write down the activity and you write down, I'm going to talk about my relationship issues or a work situation, whatever that is. That's really, really helpful for therapists, but also clients. They save a lot of time in the therapy hour, um, you know, figuring out what they want to discuss basically. So definitely. that's that's so interesting to have it all in one in one place. I'll have clients that come in and they're like, oh, let me pull up my notes and they'll scroll through their phone and they'll be looking and looking and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, here they are, here they are. So it's nice to be able to have that all organized and they can make the best use of their session time being mm -hmm. organized like that and coming prepared and knowing that what they want to talk and, about. And they're taking more it, of an initiative. Yeah, sure. And, and therapy is expensive. You know, it's yeah. a big investment to be yeah. uh, paying out of pocket for therapy sessions. So you want to make the most of that. And exactly. I'm sure yeah, and I'm sure you guys are wondering, is this app HIPAA compliant? And Yeah, of course it's HIPAA it compliant. Is. I was going to ask that. You always are like in right, in my, head. right in my head. Well, yep. I'm pretty close to your head. I, I should always that. mention that in the beginning because we actually built the product ground up um, being HIPAA compliant. It was one of the first things we took care of. Um, so, so, yeah, it is HIPAA compliant. How do you make something HIPAA compliant like this? Just that oh, we, we would <laughs> have to get... That sounds um, like I need like Tylenol a, for that question. <laughs> is it like so, a certain level of encryption? Give me the high-level answer, <laughs> not like super techie answer. Uh, uh, all right, high-level answer, and I'm not technical as well, so that might help. So basically, it's two things for me. The one is making sure that the data people share your, uh, are not patient identifiable, so nobody can be identified by the information they share. So that's very, very important. So we actually actually don't see what your clients are, uh, who your clients are. We see an ID number, for example, for very, very, um, you know, urgent situations. We do go and see who it is, but only if it's required and it's always logged and who did it and why they did it. So we have to really log that. And the other part of it, the second part is simply admin stuff, right? Like, so make sure your laptop is locked because my laptop has very, very sensitive information. So um, I make sure that it's locked. I make sure it's never stolen. You know, I make sure that I don't leave it unattended. And this goes on for all kinds of other things uh, within our organization and also being trained um, to know all these different guidelines. So that's my high level, high level view. Hopefully it was good enough. Yeah, that was definitely good enough. So there's the part of the technology, but also a part that we're responsible for. Yeah. Yes, both sides. Actually, mo most, uh, most errors happen from humans. Uh, even when we talk about hacking, for example, it's mostly human uh, error, actually. It's never, you know, we have these images of a hacker going in and doing all kinds of, um, you know, very, very complicated stuff. Sometimes it's just about deceiving the human behind it. You know, as, as you say that, I just was, I, I watch a lot of like murder FBI crime shows <laughs> and they were like, the FBI was following this guy on like the dark web and he would go to like different coffee shops or whatever. And the, the day that they were going to arrest him, he went to his usual coffee shop, but the internet wasn't working. And so they followed him into the library. And so two of the agents um, stood behind him and actually started like a ruckus. So he like literally turns around and when he turns around, the other agent grabbed his computer. Like... <laughs> Like stuff like that happens that quick and that, but that could be like human error, right? Like you're doing your notes at Starbucks and you don't realize there's people yeah. in the window walking behind you and looking at a computer. Exactly. Um, so exactly. it's just important. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So tell us like how, how is this app helping um, clients be more accountable? How are they making more progress? What yeah. What are you guys having? Definitely. So right now we, uh, we have a lot of um, active therapists that are using it with our clients and they're doing it, using it in different ways. One of the major ways they're using it is assigning homework, of course, and that's very helpful for those therapists that are already assigning homework via paperwork sheets because um, the, biggest, the big question they have is that their clients actually are not doing the homework. So that's where we help uh, because we know that home homework compliance leads to better outcomes. There are many clinical studies which actually have proven that. The missing piece is how do we give Give therapists superpowers that's what I like to say to assign homework to their clients and how do you actually get those clients to do it now most of the people now nowadays um, are, are know about smartphones and they're using apps so uh, it is very helpful for a client to be able to use and um, complete activities on their mobile application
application at their own time. So there are two there are two or three different types of kind of usages that we see. We see the therapist who goes in and sign homework, and they're very interested in their clients kind of having homework, not necessarily monitoring it at all times. And we see the other type of therapist who is assigning homework, but also very, very regularly kind of monitors it. What are they doing? Why are they not doing it? Adapting the treatment plan, um, you know, creating new activities, discussing it in the session. And in terms of the clients, they really love it because it's easy, it's um, accessible, and they don't have to carry with them, with them you know, notebooks and, and so on. And it's engaging. We are trying to do the app a lot more engaging. Uh, and uh, right now we have a lot of data in terms of which activities are helpful, which activities are being assigned, which activities being completed. And we know, for example, that 97% of the clients using it find the activities um, helpful because we asked them, was the activity helpful and so on. Some of the most successful activities, as, as I said, was uh, is uh, about next session. Uh, feedback also on the last session, um, emotion tracking, uh, journaling, um, self-care journaling, for example, as well, and also distress level tracking, uh, which is very important uh, to monitor throughout the session. And we're adding activities uh, as we go forward. The feedback from the therapist has been the one thing that really makes me uh, wake up in the morning and go to work because we get it via support, via Facebook group that we have as well. And they're, they just want more. They want a mobile app for therapists as well. They want to be commenting in between sessions and the activities that um, they're being completing. So we are actually launching uh, new features every single month. Uh, one of the latest features we're going to be releasing this month is exporting data uh, for anyone who wants to use it for insurance purposes or other purposes. So um, that's something that uh, has been asked. But we also want to do further on the HR integrations, for example. Um, just make the life of the therapist as easy as possible because one of the pushbacks we have gotten sometimes from therapists is, you know, this is going to take time of my day. Time is very, very important. And normally they don't bill for hours outside of the sessions, right? Mm -hmm. um, and those who have actually uh, used it, um, we, they say that it actually saves them time uh, because it uh, saves them time, but also helps their clients get better and also reduce dropout because the client gets engaged and they understand the purpose of the therapy even more. So that's the feedback has been very, very positive. Um, and uh, we're really excited to kind of go in the next six to 12 months to make the product better and better and better. We're a small team of seven people and um, we are very accessible. We have customer support despite our small size. So I know we're going to talk, we were talking about like three tips specifically. And one of the things that you were just already mentioning is about like how, and as you were talking, like I, I get it, right? It's like technology makes it easier, right? Because if you hand a client a worksheet, maybe they put it in whatever, they stick it in their purse or they leave it in their car and then they forget about it. Well, we always have these guys in our hands always, right? Phones. Um, and so it just makes it easier, right? And so is there like a reminder on the app? Like can your therapist send a reminder? Is it automatic? How does that happen? Yeah, there are reminders for both the therapist and the client. The therapist uh, can schedule an activity, uh, for example, about next session and they can say on Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. for this client. And the client oh. receives a push, push notification at the time that the therapist scheduled it. So that's very helpful for the, for the client. so cool. You're, you're liking this. I that see it in so your face. Cool. Yeah. And, the, and, and, and the therapist also receives email notifications when their uh, clients have completed activities or send messages and they can see it at their own time. So um, uh, they also receive reminders and they have web app reminders. So if they go into the dashboard, they will see specifically, for example, Kate uh, did X activity and you will click on that. It will take you directly to that activity. So it's a uh, very, very uh, easy user friendly. There's something that's very different about having a reminder that you know is sent from your therapist hmm, and getting yeah. that on your phone and then a reminder that you're set yourself like oh meditation at you know 8 a.m. Uh, I'm tired <laughs> you know like I didn't sleep well last night or I have a crazy day I'm just gonna skip it but when your therapist sends that and sets that up it's something like I don't know I would have I'd be like okay I gotta make this happen <laughs> accountability it's a, well, it's yeah, a key exactly. word yeah and I think yeah. there's sometimes this you know I think our clients sometimes don't want to let us down like that's like this unspoken mm. thing that we usually don't know you know they also want to do well and and yeah I, I guess it would be the same if you like had a trainer you're working out or something like that yeah 
It's pretty much the same. And uh, we always use the analogy of a music teacher, right? If you're trying to play a musical instrument, it is hard and it takes effort and time and focus. And it depends also on the teacher, uh, but also it depends on you doing the work as, as well. So it's also accountability towards yourself, but also towards your therapist in this case. Yeah. And how easy is it to get buy-in from the client? Uh, I think that's one of the most important, uh, it's one of my first tips as well, get buy-in from your clients. We see, we have interviewed, um, as I said, over 500 therapists, but we interview our customers regularly to understand how they're doing their work. The most successful therapist when it comes to uh, homework, assigning homework and getting the clients to do it, is get the buy-in. Explain to them why does this homework exist? Why do you actually introduce their chat, for example, or any other tool, or any of that type? other type of homework in your therapy. How is it going to help them? And uh, I think that's very, very important to do it in the first session. And because we do see also other therapists, for example, just assigning it without necessarily explaining that to clients. And we see uh, that those who actually get the buy-in are the ones who are more successful. And it makes sense. You just have to explain why the, does this exist and why is, what, what is in it for them. So getting buy-in from your clients on doing the homework is number one advice I would have um, based on what we see from, uh, what we see from the therapists we interview uh, and assign a homework so far. The app gives the opportunity to have such a different conversation about that. It changes the context a little bit because you don't, when you, as a therapist, I mean, I know I don't sit there and explain the reasons why I'm giving an assignment or inviting them to, to do some work, some homework in between sessions. I don't explain why that's important off the bat, but if I had an app, then it would be changing the, the dynamic of the conversation. That's so interesting. Yeah, and I think about how many times I assign the same stuff to different clients, right? Like it just did it yesterday. The same stuff, the same video, the same distressing conversation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, it's all uh, country located with an app. <laughs> Definitely. And I mean, we plan to help there as well uh, as we go forward, kind of providing, for example, explanations uh, to therapists that they can give to their clients. But it is about the alliance that a therapist and a client have. And uh, I think we've heard that term a lot. And it's so, so important to, to get that buy-in. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, very, very interesting. Really, really interesting. So what do you want to make sure our audience takes away from your message here today, Chorus? Um, two other things, actually three other things. One of them, in terms of the homework activities, make it short and feasible, uh, right? So we, we uh, there are, even within Theratia, there are activities which are longer and bigger and maybe more complicated. Um, and I think assigning a first activity which is easy and short and something realistic makes absolute sense. That's probably why many therapists decide to assign about next session. It's so simple, it makes mm. so much sense. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, technology is something that can help. It's an enabler. It's not the solution necessarily for everything. And there are products out there like Theratat, but there are other products as well, which can be acting as an enabler. So use technology as an enabler, but not the solution. Even from our customers, we see that uh, not 100% of their clients are using Theratat, but definitely the majority of them. So it is, it is for some people, maybe not for others, but use it as an enabler or uh, technology. And the um, other thing, if you're definitely uh, interested in assigning homework, uh, I know no better tool uh, to do that than, uh, than Therachat, of course. And uh, you can go to www.therachat, T-H-E-R-A-C-H-A-T dot I-O. We are running promotions for the May Mental Health uh, Awareness. So if you go to our pricing page, you'll see them. Um, and uh, if you have any feedback, we love feedback. You will realize that the mo first moment you get in touch with us. Um, so that's, that's all. Right, and you have a special for our listeners that if they put in the coupon code month off, they'll receive a free month. Is that right? Definitely, exactly. Awesome. Month off, low case letters, all of them, one, one word. So we're going to also put that on the show notes. So that for you guys that aren't in a place where you can write down or whatever, no worries. We always got you covered there. So we'll put that <laughs> on the show notes. So definitely check it out. I mean, I still have to check it out. I signed up and then I haven't gotten on it yet. But <laughs> I've been excited about it and I'm excited to actually utilize it. Great. Yeah. So thanks so much for hanging with us today and sharing this really cool technolo technology um, opportunity for clients really to succeed and therapists to succeed with their clients. It's just, it's awesome.
Yeah, thank you so much for having me and also props and kudos to everything that you do. I think you're pretty amazing. Your energy is amazing, but also the content and what you share is amazing. We see therapists wanting to uh, hear a lot of the stories that um, you actually produce. So thank you. Aww. Thank you. Aww, That's such a great... Yeah, we appreciate, we appreciate it. that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, interestingly enough, being an, an online entrepreneur sometimes is you don't always get that feedback. So when an email pops up or something like that, or you share that, we totally appreciate that. So thank you. You're welcome. So next week, you guys want to join us um, on the podcast for Danielle Kettler, who's talking about myths about insurance-based practices. Danielle is a licensed therapist herself in Chicago, um, and she actually created Be Your Own Biller to help therapists credential, bill, insurance. Um, and one of the cool things that she talked about is how to advocate to raise your rates. So you're definitely not going to want to miss that podcast, especially if you take insurance. Um, one thing I know that we haven't actually mentioned about our podcast, so we've been video our podcasts um, probably like the last 20 episodes now and we're gonna maybe be a little bit uh, maybe think, a little bit more yeah, maybe a little bit more probably about 30 episodes now and we mentioned it a couple couple we? podcasts ago well, we yes. might say it but we're not like really clear not so like they official, are gonna yeah. be eventually on YouTube so if you enjoy listening to us great if you want to see us cool too um, and the so fun you, thing about the YouTube is that they're unedited you get the raw version so you get the mistakes you get the laughs you get the you know the things that are edited out of the actual auditory podcast this is true so it's quite entertaining <laughs> so um, I'm sure that you have a colleague I'm sure you have many colleagues actually and if you, you think that they would find this podcast interesting we were gonna recommend you to share that with your colleague um, and actually really try out TheraChat. It could improve your therapeutic relationship, your practice. Um, and think about when clients have better outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think that they're going to do? They're probably going to talk about yes, you and say, go you got to spread the word. Spread the word. word of mouth, baby. You want some raving fans. So if TheraChat helps you with this, um, this is a great way to build your practice. And not like one of those like direct, direct ways that we always talk about, like have a great website or this. It could be a really great resource. Um, so thanks guys for hanging out with us today. We hope you have an inspired and amazing day. And thank you for allowing us to continue to inspire you from startup to mastery. See Until you next, next time. time.